and gentlemen. Let's get ready to rumble. All right, here we go. So the next sequ sequence of videos is uh, a series of questions from recent uh, AP Chem exams, and specifically question number one on the FRQ, which as you all know, the first question on the FRQ is always an, say it all together, equilibrium question. So here's a sample of several that I've plucked, plucked from the past to take a peek at. So let's get going. Ah, uh, where did this one come from? This one came from the 2010 A version of the AP Chem exam. Several reactions are carried out using silver bromide, a cream colored silver salt. Again, everybody knows the salt means ionic compound, which the value of the solubility product constant KSP is 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13th. I hope you're impressed by the fact that that's an incredibly small number. So what exactly is the solubility uh, product reaction? Let's write it. AG doesn't ask us to. AGBR solid in equilibrium with its ions. So these are just equilibria where very slightly insoluble, very insoluble compounds, okay, are dissolving. And as they dissolve, because they're ionic compounds, they dissociate into their corresponding ions. So there is the solubility product reaction for silver bromide. Silver bromide solid in equilibrium with silver ion and bromide ion. Again, remember what that means. The rate of the forward reaction, the dissolving of the silver bromide the, to form the ions, is happening at the same rate that the ions are reforming to form the silver bromide. Bingo. If we want to write the KSP, Solubility product conics expression, it's just going to be the concentration of silver ion times the concentration of the bromide ion at equilibrium. Again, solids do not appear in the equilibrium expression. The only requirement is there must be some solid present. The amount of solid doesn't matter. Solids have a constant molarity. Think about that. Not important for us. Just remember that solids do not are not included in the equilibrium expression. So now we want to figure out what is the concentration of the silver ion when the solution is saturated. That means it has dissolved its maximum amount of silver ion. A saturated solution is another way to say it, and that's solution at equilibrium. Okay, so we're going to do the same techniques that we've used in all of the previous equilibrium. We write the reaction, and you're not surprised, we're going to generate our staple. Initially, no silver ion, no bromide ion in solution. I take away my magic wand. Some of the silver bromide must dissolve. I get X as the concentration of silver ion, X as the concentration of bromide ion at equilibrium. I don't care about the silver bromide. The only requirement is that it is present. Hang on. Problem here. It is present. So as long as there's some solid present, we know it's at equilibrium. Concentration of silver ion, concentration of probe ion is going to be X. We know that silver ion times bromide equals 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13th when the system is at equilibrium. X is the silver ion concentration, X is the bromide ion concentration. That's equal to 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13th. X squared is equal to 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13th. X, I'm going to roll this up a little bit. X is therefore equal to the square root of 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13th. And if we grab our calculators and do that calculation, that works out to be 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. Again, very low concentration. That makes sense. The silver bromide is essentially insoluble, but a little bit dissolves. So our silver ion concentration is equal to 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7th. All right. Excellent. I hope that makes sense. So is the bromide ion concentration. The bromide ion concentration is also equal to 7.1 times 7 to the minus 7th. All right. Interesting thought question here. 
We now take that solution, that saturated solution, and we add 50 milliliters of pure distilled water to it. We stir it all around, and equilibrium is reestablished. There still is some solid silver bromide that sits at the bottom of the beaker. Is the value of the silver ion greater than, less than, or equal to? The concentration of the silver ion is the same. Sure, more silver bromide dissolves, but because the system is equilibrium and if we only have the silver bromide present, the concentration of the silver ion remains the same. So more silver bromide dissolves, but the volume increases, the silver ion concentration remains the same. It's determined by the equilibrium and the equilibrium constant. Right? I hope that makes sense. All right. Good. So now calculate the maximum volume of water in liters necessary to dissolve 5 gram sample of the silver bromide. So if we look at the above, 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter of silver bromide, that means that there are 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles of silver bromide that dissolve per liter of solution. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask how many liters okay how many liters are does it take to dissolve 5.0 grams of pure silver bromide you know the slogan when in doubt convert to altogether moles one mole of silver bromide is 188 grams thank you for giving us that information college board Grams cancel grams, we've got moles. We know that every liter of the solution can hold 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7th moles of silver bromide. Again, I hope you understand that factor from above. Well, lo and behold, moles of silver bromide cancel moles of silver bromide. And if we do that calculation, we end up with the fact that it would take a whopping to two figs, six figs, 3.7 times 10 to the fourth, or 37,000 liters of solution to dissolve that five grams. If that doesn't tell you that silver bromide is fairly, is pretty insoluble, I'm not sure what will. All right, so now, now we're gonna take a new experiment we mix 10 milliliters of 15 molar silver nitrate with 2 milliliters of 5 molar sodium bromide. Key to this problem, recognizing that the nitrate ion is a spectator, the sodium ion is a spectator, and what I've got is this. I am creating a solution that has the silver ion concentration of what? Well, I've got the 10 milliliters of the solution that I added. That solution had a molarity of 1.5 times 10 to the minus fourth, but I mixed that with another solution that was 2 milliliters, and so the total volume of the solution is 10 milliliters plus 2 milliliters. So I have to take into account the dilution of that effect that happens when I mix those two solutions together. When I do that, the concentration of the silver ion ends up being... 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4th. So again, let me make sure everybody understands. This is the volume of the solution that I took. This is the molarity of the original solution. The solution gets diluted by the fact that I'm mixing it with 2 milliliters of the other solution. We're assuming that uh, volumes are additive. So therefore, the total volume is 12 meter, milliliters, so that silver ion is slightly diluted to 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4th. The bromide ion, on the other hand, I have 2 milliliters of that solution. That solution has a molarity of 5.0 times 10 to the minus 4th molar. It is diluted to the same total volume, the 10 milliliters of the other solution plus the 2 milliliters of the sodium bromide solution. And its molarity is 8.3 times 10 to the minus fifth molar. 
So now, what do I do? Well, I calculate Q. You might remember Q. Q is what we calculate. It's the equilibrium expression when we're not sure if the equilibrium expression is at equilibrium. So Q is going to be the silver ion concentration times the bromide ion concentration. That's going to be equal to 1.3 times 10 to the minus fourth times 8.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. That is equal to that is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 8. If now what we can do is compare Q to K. Q is greater than KSP. KSP, again, was, what was that? Um, times 10 to the minus 13th, right? Go up to the top. 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13th. The fact that the Q is greater than the KSP tells us that there will be a precipitate. The reaction will go to the left. Go to the left, producing some solid silver bromide. So a precipitate will occur. You will observe a cream-colored precipitate. Okay? Good. All right. Finally, wrapping it up here, another photosolid question. So we've got lots of silver ion, lots of iodide ion present. A student adds a solution of sodium iodide to a test tube containing a small amount of the solid cream-colored silver bromide. After stirring the contents of the silver test tube, the student observes that the solid in the test tube changes its color from green to yellow. What is the chemical equation for the reaction that occurred? The reaction that occurred is this. The silver ion that dissolved from the silver bromide okay, reacts with the iodide that we added to form the precipitate silver iodide, excuse me, silver iodide, the yellowish substance. The fact that the silver iodide precipitated and turned the precipitate yellows tells us that the KSP of AGI, that the silver iodide must be less soluble, it's more easily produced, and therefore its KSP is less, oops, I'm getting to the second part of the problem, is less than the KSP of the AGBR. Okay? So, there we go. Last question asks us to compare the KSPs. Again, the fact that AGBR forms means Right, hope that makes some sense. Good.